It's going to be a review for targets and also a um, Criterion uh, Blu-ray review. So I was at Barnes & Noble and just looking around and um, sometimes they have a 50% off Criterion sale. So I decided to um, get a couple of, of movies and um, I recently watched a review uh, actually that day, which is totally random and weird, for Targets. Never heard of the movie by Rambo Ralph for Life. Uh, shout out to him. A, a big fan of his channel. Um, and uh, he enjoyed the movie. Um, you know, Boris Karloff's in it. The director's Peter... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Bogdanovich. Um, acclaimed director. I haven't really seen... I don't think I've seen any of his other movies, though. He was an actor in The Sopranos, though. I remember him there. Because he's an actor, he's in this movie too. Um, but yeah, he, he enjoyed the movie, he liked it. Sounded interesting. I saw it there, it's half off, so it's $20. So I said, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Beautiful Blu-ray. Um, you know, Criterion always does a good job. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but... Um, really nice nice art book in it there's a commentary there's some interviews about the movie which which I watched some of them uh, pretty interesting there's an interview by Richard uh, Linkletter but yeah um really nice blu-ray 20 bucks to me it's a little expensive still um because you know like a lot of my blu-rays that i've gotten i've gotten for like on amazon for like six seven dollars but i don't think i have any criterions so i got a couple criterions i'll probably be reviewing them coming up um, but yeah, I never seen this movie, 1968. Apparently it was a Roger Corman production, and then he sold it to, um, Paramount, I believe. So, uh, yeah, I, I uh, figured I'd check it out. I'll watch, I'll watch the audio commentary eventually. Um, it's from 2003, unfortunately Bog Bogdanovich died in 2022, I believe. So it's too bad, but I watched uh, interviews w with him. His wife was a producer, and I think she's on this. I think she helped write the script too. So, and I watched interview with Richard Linkletter. Um, some interesting commentary about the movie at the time it was made, and. Um, It's apparently it's apparently kind of loosely based on the life of um, the guy uh, who did the uh, Texas uh, tower shooting in 1966 Charles Whitman Who uh, unfortunately, you know, went went there to a tower, started shooting people with a rifle, and um, I think later they they did a uh, an autopsy of his brain, and he, and he had a he had a brain tumor, and I think maybe that influenced him to do it, but I don't really know why. But anyways, nice Criterion. Really have no complaints. Beautiful image. Great sound. Just a good movie. Um, I think in the interviews they say that the movie was made for about 120000 at the time. Roger Corman paid for that. And he's like, just pay me back and, and we're good. And um, I think he got paid like 150 k back. So he made some money. And he was friends with them. So 
But the movie's about Boris Karloff is kind of, you know, he's getting old. He's kind of frustrated with with uh, what what's going on with cinema these days. He feels like he's an old ancient relic. He's not relevant anymore. He, I think he's doing stage plays. Although I was kind of unclear on that, because at one point, I think he says, like, no one wants to see me on the stage anymore. I'm an old relic. So I wasn't sure if he was talking about movies or uh, on, on the sta on the stage. I think it's movies, though. But anyway, I think they're low-budget movies. And um, Peter Bog Bogdanovich is this guy who just wrote this script for him. And he, and he says it's a great script. He never read it. He, he decides he, he wants to, he's done, he wants to retire. He may go back to uh, the United Kingdom, to England, where he was born. And um, he has an, an assistant, Nancy, um, sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, Nancy Shu. Um, wow, who died in 1980. Wow. Um, just some of these people in this movie ended up dying kind of young. Um, but, um, yeah, so... So, he is going to retire. He's kind of fed up with it all. Um, and things unfold where he's already agreed to do this... Um, not a um like 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 a fan event basically at a at a drive through movie theater you know he's Boris Karloff and this he has a different name but you know he's he's famous of course for being in the old great horror movies you know the mummy the bride of frankenstein uh the black cat um which I would like to go back eventually and watch more of them. Um, I think I, I have the Blu-ray set for, I think it's like eight or ten of them. And I watched, um, but he's not in this, but I watched uh, The Creature from the Black Lagoon and I actually really liked it. Um, but, um, you know, he, he's in he's in these, 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 these old great horror movies. Which they show some of them in in this. Um, forget which one they show, but anyways. Um, oh wow, he's in the original Scarface. I mean, this guy's career just goes you know far back, and so yeah. So he agreed to do this um, event. He's not going to do any more movies. Peter Bogdanovich is kind of angry at him because of that. Um, by the way, he's a really good actor in this. Uh, I didn't even know it was him until I watched the interview and he says that, you know, mentions him as like, and I looked it up. Oh yeah, that's him. So, but he's like, you know, he's friends with, with, with him. He's kind of, he, him and, him and, um, uh, Bogdanovich and Boris Karloff, like, like get drunk at his, at his, uh, at his house kind of and then he's kind of angry at him because he's like you should read this script it's really good it reinvigorate your career but he doesn't want to do it but he 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 basically is going to do this event because his assistant nancy really wants him to because she agreed to it um so he in the end he decides to do it then there's another plot going on with tim o'kelly who's based on charles whitman and he is really into an avid gun enthusiast, let's say. He, um, the movie opens with him, I think it opens with him shooting, or buying, actually buying a rifle. And, um, he is, um, he has a wife. Him and his wife live with his parents at their house. And, you know, um, something's just off about this guy. And then he says to his wife one night, you know, I need to talk to you. Um, I've been having some strange thoughts. 
and she just thinks you know he's acting a little weird but she's really busy with work so then she goes to work and um he then uh um well i guess i'm getting into spoiler oh, spoilers but um um but yeah for, first off i like the movie check it out it's 1968 but honestly the movie felt more like a 70s movie to me like 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 the pace the tone it didn't feel date that dated at all um really watchable movie very well made i'm gonna try and check out some of bogdanovich's other movies like paper moon the last picture show which are very acclaimed movies um but yeah check it out uh if you can pick up the criterion especially if it's on sale I think I, I don't know if it's nationwide, but I think at Barnes and Noble, they're they're doing the sale fifty percent off. So maybe check it out. Um, totally worth it. So so yeah, I really like the movie. Great performance by Karloff. Um, he's he's very good in the movie. Uh, Tim O'Kelly O'Kelly's very good. Um, I really have no, I'm little to no complaints about the movie. So. I mean, it's only like, it's got to be like a less than an hour and a half, like an hour 25 or something. It's, it's not, it's not long at all. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Check it out. So again, into spoilers now. So he then goes and he, he goes and gets his handgun from his car. He's then kind of just sitting in his room alone, smoking a cigarette. His wife comes home. She thinks it's a little weird. He's like, oh, don't don't turn the lights on because I have a headache, and and she, and they go to sleep. And then the next morning, he basically kills her. He kills his mother, and he kills this guy, this young guy that's helping his mother with the groceries, and um, which is what Charles Whitman did. I don't, I think it's just that he killed he killed his wife and his mother, but um, then he goes out <laughs> and basically starts a shooting spree with all these guns he has. And um, he ends up, basically, because he's being chased by a cop, he loses the cop, he ends up going to the drive-in theater where Karloff's going to be, and he starts uh, shooting people there. Um, and yeah, and, and the end of the movie is is pretty great, because Karloff, um, like, he's got to be like 80 or 81 or something, but he... he, he, he um, like, the guy's kind of cornered, like, the police are on him, uh, O'Kelly, and, uh, Karloff has a cane, and he's, like, and he just walks in, and, because and, and, the guy shoots his assistant, who's kind of, like, it seems, like, kind of, like, almost like a daughter figure to him, um, you know, like, so, or maybe, like, a granddaughter, um, but, um, yeah, and then he, he's, he just seems very angry, and, um, Earlier, he was kind of saying that he, you know, people are afraid of things like this. Like, he points to, like, this, like, shooting at a supermarket. So, he's like, that's what people fear now. They don't fear, you know, Frankenstein. They don't They don't fear th these old horror, um, you know, uh, he's like, they, they call it camp, you know. Now, I guess they would call it cheesy or something, but, um, but yeah, he just walks up to him and, and knocks him knocks him with the cane, smacks him a couple times in the face. And then the guy's just kind of cowering in the corner and then the, then the cops rush in. So, um, and then, and then he has a great line. He's like, this is what I feared. So, um, you know, and I think it's Karloff's last movie. It's, it's a nice, uh, capstone on his career. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I, I, I especially Karloff. He's he's so great. He's so great in this. He seems like a really nice guy. In the interviews, they were saying, you know, he's a, he was really nice to work with because they had him for like two, three days. Because they like, uh, I think George Corman overpaid him on a film, so um, he owed he uh, Karloff owed Corman like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars or something. So Roger Corman's like, hey, just like, you know, work for two, three days on this picture with with this kid, Bogdanovich, and, and, we're, and we're good. So he did that. And, um, you know, he, he gives a great performance. Apparently, like, he died, I think, a year after this. He had a bunch of health problems. He had, I think, emphysema. 
and then I didn't even notice it in the movie, but in one of the scenes, they um, when they talk about his health problems, he had like a like part of his one of his legs was partially bent. He had like a brace on it. I, I didn't even notice that, but that's why he has the cane. And um, but they said he never complained. Like he had these health problems. He was a you know total trooper, just worked through it. Um, a total professional. You know, he just seems like a really nice old guy. And uh, it's kind of nice to see, you know, this 80, whatever, 80, 81 year old. And, and he's given this heroic scene at the end where he takes down the bad guy. And he's like, you know, why was I afraid of, the, of this? So, um, so yeah, I, I really, I really liked it. You know, there's some subtext. They talk about, about the Vietnam War and... Uh, guns in America and stuff, um, which which is totally in there. But um, they were also saying like, you know, that was that was in there when they were writing it. But they kind of just wanted to write a movie that fit what Karloff could do because they're like, we only had Karloff for a couple days, so we had to write a movie around that. And this is what we came up with, and they thought of Whitman. Um, so. So yeah, I think they I think they did a great job. Um definitely um a movie that I'll I'll revisit. I'll revisit I'll I'll check out the commentary. Uh definitely. And then apparently when it was bought, it was gonna be it was it was about to be released in sixty eight. And, you know, unfortunately Martin Luther King Jr., uh Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed assassinated and then robert f kennedy was assassinated and then, then this came out and it didn't do that well i don't think it made much money and um you know um bogdanovich's wife was saying because uh she's like when, when she heard that i think uh, uh king was um, um uh, assassinated she's like well you know people aren't gonna aren't gonna have a um an appetite to go see this kind kind of movie and you know it's probably true but um you know i think it's a really good movie and um interesting commentary and definitely uh, a great performance by uh boris karloff and i was looking at tim o'kelly's career and he did a lot of tv and yeah, he died in 1990 i think of like a heart problem so he died, you know, pretty young, and uh, Nancy Shue, uh, she died in 1980 um, of uh, ulterior sclerosis. So, so yeah, it's kind of crazy. And then Karloff died a year after making this. Um. But yeah, um, good movie. Um, definitely uh, um, entertaining movie. Kind of dark subject matter, but I think Karloff and and Nancy, his secretary or his assistant, and Bogdanovich as the actor, I, I think you know bring some warmth. And because um, you can tell they're all kind of like friends, and even though he's kind of pissed at them, but. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely a stand-up performance by uh, Boris Karloff. But uh, check it out. Uh, maybe maybe grab the Criterion, especially if it's on sale. So, but um, <clears throat> yeah, that's about it. Um, comment below if you've seen the movie, if you enjoy it, and uh, see you next time.